Hey everybody, this is Mr. Mott. What I want to do is go over uh, our lab determining the empirical formula of a hydrate. Okay, first step you're going to do is you're going to weigh out uh, and get the mass of your evaporating dish. Okay, so I've got my balance. I'm going to make sure I'm going to tear it and I'm going to get the mass. Okay, so if you're absent, this is something you can do uh, with the data that we've got. Uh, otherwise, we'll just kind of see the method and how we do this. So my mass of my evaporating dish is 35.48 or 49 grams or so. So now what I'm going to do, the second thing is I'm going to add about a gram of our magnesium sulfate, which is just Epsom salts. Okay. So here's your chemical, kind of a fluffy kind of solid here. So if my mass of my evaporating dish is stable about 35.51, I'm going to add about a gram, so it should be about 36.51. It doesn't have to be exactly a gram, but it can be uh, pretty close. I think that's good enough for us. So then uh, in our data table, we would record uh, 36.54 uh, and write that down. And that's going to be what we need to do as far as weighing out our chemical. And you can kind of see um, it's not very much in our dish, and, uh, but that's all we're going to need to do our lab. Next step we're going to do is we're going to heat this up on a Bunsen burner. And something that you're going to want to take note of is kind of the texture of the magnesium sulfate. And that even though it doesn't look like it right now, there's actually water in that solid. Okay. Uh, so that the next thing we're going to do is we're going to heat this up on a Bunsen burner and try to burn away all that solid. All right. Okay, here we are. We're heating up our uh, magnesium sulfate, our Epsom salts, on our Bunsen burner, and hopefully, what we'll be able to see as our as our uh, chemical heats up, we'll be able to see a little steam coming off, and that's going to prove that there is some water uh, in there. What we're also going to notice as we heat this up is um, is that the chemical itself will kind of harden. Okay, um, actually, I don't know if we can kind of see it from where it's at. We'll give this a try. Some of the magnesium sulfate is kind of popping off, popping out of there. I don't know if you're able to kind of see that or not. It's not picking it up too well in the light. Um, we hear a little bit of crackling as well. That's a good indication that we have, um, you know, something happening as it kind of heats and cooks away. Okay. Um, as it kind of heats, like I mentioned, the chemicals is going to sort of harden. We'll notice the texture is going to change. Um, as it sort of hardens, it forms a clump. And so as we, as we heat this or as it sort of forms the clump, what we'll do, and I'll see if I can turn this so we can see this a little bit better. Um, kind of see it there a little bit. It's going to kind of change its texture there. What I want to do is just kind of break up the clumps. And this is going to help kind of see the clumps kind of broken up there now. Uh, what that's going to do is going to help uh, heat this thoroughly and heat it evenly. Sometimes what happens is we, uh, as we heat it, it sort of clumps up and then some of the chemical in the interior remains, um, remains uh, unheated and unreacted, okay? And our goal here is to break up all the clumps and be able to heat all that water away, okay? The main way that we're going to tell that if we're done is, um, is a change in the texture and we don't see any more steam coming out and we don't hear any more crackling. Okay, But uh, from my experience, this is a lab where uh, it seems like you're done, but it's helpful to keep heating it because it is tough to boil or heat all that water away. Okay, And again, that's kind of what our chemical looks like. And, um, and again, we're going to just kind of heat this up for another uh, few minutes. After we're done uh, with this, after heating it for another few minutes, uh, we'll turn the Bunsen burner off. We can put the dish on the lab table and let it cool for a few minutes. And after it cools, what we'll do is uh, we'll get the final mass. Uh, but it's going to be important not to try to get the mass before it cools. Uh, the balance will have a hard time reading the mass um, and then we also might forget that 
that this uh, evaporating dish is going to be very, very hot. It's not going to be glowing red, but it still will be very, very hot after heating on the Bunsen burner for a while. Okay. Hey everybody, this is Mr. Mott. What we're going to do is go over the calculations involved with our determining the empirical formula of a hydrate lab. Sounds really fancy, but all we're trying to do is figure out in our hydrate, which was some Epsom salts or magnesium sulfate, we're trying to figure out how many water molecules were attached to the MgSO4. And so what we did in our labs, we heated it up, and what we did is we decomposed it into the solid and then the water, which turned out in the form of water vapor. And what we were trying to figure out was this, how many water molecules were liberated and, how many, and uh, also sort of how many water molecules were attached there. Okay, so uh, the data that we collected was uh, the mass of our evaporating dish was 35.51 grams. Um, I added about a gram uh, to the evaporating dish um, my total mass was 36.54 grams, and um, so then subtracting those two, I got 1.03 grams. So that's how many grams of the Epsom salts, the magnesium sulfate hydrate that I started with. Uh, at the very end, my mass of the evaporating dish and product was 36.09. And so um, what I'm going to do now is figure out... Uh, Analysis question number one, determine the mass of MgSO4 produced. So this is our product without the water. So we started out, um, so our mass of our evaporating dish in our product was 36.09 grams. And I'm going to subtract the mass of, of 35.51, which is the mass of my empty evaporating dish. And so the, the amount of product that we had left over was 0 0.58 grams. Okay, so that's the amount of product I had. Uh, trying to figure out how much water was uh, lost in the reaction, well, I started with 1.03 grams of solid, the hydrate. And um, I'm going to subtract out the MgSO4, which is we just calculated 0.58 grams. And we get 0.45 grams. Okay, so that's 0.45 grams of water, and uh, 0.58 grams is the MgSO4. Okay, so we know how much uh, uh, MgSO4 we made, and we know how much water was evaporated off. Okay, so then question number three says, using the molar mass of MgSO4, determine the number of moles of MgSO4 made. So we're going to start out, the thing that we know is our 0.58 grams of MgSO4. And what I'm going to try to find are moles of MgSO4. Remember our abbreviation for moles is the letter N. Okay, clean that up a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to put my units of grams on the bottom and moles on top. And when you're comparing grams and moles, the relationship between grams and moles is always the molar mass, which says for every one mole, it'll weigh a certain number of grams, which you would get from our periodic table. So our molar mass of MgSO4 is 120.4 grams. Okay. So uh, my units of grams will cancel. That's how I know I put everything in the right spot. I'm unit left with the units of moles, which is what I want. And so now... Uh, doing my math, 0.58 times 1 divided by 120.4, we get 0 0.0048. Okay, write that in a little different spot here. 0 0.0048 moles of MgSO4. Whoops. Okay, that's our answer. Uh, we're going to do the same thing for water now. And. Uh, Let's see, so I started out with point, or we determined we had 0.45 grams of water that were in our original sample based on our, our calculations, and I want to know how many moles of water we made. I'm going to put grams of water on the bottom, so these units cancel, moles of water on top. Uh, it's one for every one mole of water, it will weigh 18 grams. 
and uh, doing the calculations 0.45 times 1 divided by 18 we get 0 0.025 moles okay so what we're going to do with these two data these two numbers that we calculate is compare the mole ratio um, and so um, we're going to take our bigger number of moles divided by our smaller number of moles our bigger number of moles is 0 0.025 moles of water and we're going to divide that by our smaller number of moles which is our moles of MgSO4 so the reason we're doing this is we're going to get a number and it's about 5.2 so it says for every 5.2 moles of water there will be one mole of MgSO4 so the reason we're doing this is sort of we have a cleaner ratio of the moles of water to moles of MgSO4. So um, going back to our original problem, going all the way up to the top, what we were trying to figure out here is how many moles of um, how many moles of water were attached to our MgSO4. Again, highlighted here. Um, and, and we're also finding how many moles of water were made. And so according to our data, uh, rounding to the, to the nearest whole number, this value would be five. So five water, miles, water molecules attached to every one molecule of MgSO4. Uh, and then this value here would be five as well. And so um, what we kind of figured out from our calculations there is that um, that these numbers that we put in front of um, in front of these chemicals when we balanced equations actually represent moles. So with this calculation, what uh, our calculation shows is that for every one mole of MgSO4 H2O5, you will make one mole of MgSO4 solid and five moles of water. Okay, so that's where our calculation shows us. And I would say um, if you and your calculations get anywhere between uh, uh, any number greater than five, I think you had some really, really good data. Uh, the actual number is seven, um, but it's a really hard value to get in practice because you have to cook the um, Epsom salts a lot longer than you, than you think you would have to. But I hope this illustrates uh, the connection between um, the data we collected and um, and how it correlates to our balanced equation uh, also shed some lights on what these actual numbers mean. Um, so that's uh, that's our empirical formula of a hydrate lab. Uh, thanks for watching.